What is it? Exactly what I feared. This is what Cinder has done. There are times when all of us need to stand up to danger. Sparks, look out! I can't, Ignitus. I just learned what I am. You can, Spyro. You can. You are a purple dragon, a very special creature. But right now, you must fight. It's time to unleash the true dragon within you. What is it? Exactly what I feared. This is what Cinder has done. There are times when all of us need to stand up to danger. Sparks, look out! I can't, Ignitus. I just learned what I am. You can, Spyro. You can. You are a purple dragon. A very special creature. But right now, you must fight. <laughs> It's time to unleash the true dragon within you. He's got a name, you know. Yes, my name is Spyro. And you must be Terador. Yes, yes I am. And I must say, I never thought I'd live to meet you, Spyro. Look, I'd love to sit here and hug everybody and chit-chat, but how about we leave before the volcano blows us up? You're right. I've got to tell the others what Cinder is up to. Let's go. Right behind you. Actually, I'm right in front of you. Look, when the guy says run, I think he knows something. Go, Spyro! Fly like you've never flown before! I'll go back to the temple for help! Dragon lives. He's got a name, you know. Yes, my name is Spyro. And you must be Terador. Yes, yes I am. And I must say, I never thought I'd live to meet you, Spyro. Look, I'd love to sit here and hug everybody and chit-chat, but how about we leave before the volcano blows us up? You're right. I've got to tell the others what Cinder is up to. Let's go. I'm right behind you. Actually, I'm right in front of you. Look, when the guy says run, I think he knows something. Go, Spyro! Fly like you've never flown before! I'll go back to the temple for help!
to find them. Help ignite us. You're gone, Spyro. There's nothing we can do. I don't care. Ignitus wouldn't leave me. Spyro is right. I'm right? Oh my god, that's the first. Yes. You'd never find them in this mess. And you're not ready to face Cinder yet. The time to fight will come. But it is not now. I guess you're right. Let's go. We've got to find them. Help ignite us. They're gone, Spyro. There's nothing we can do. I don't care. Ignitus wouldn't leave me. Spyro is right. I'm right? Oh my god, that's a first. Yes. You'd never find them in this mess. And you're not ready to face Cinder yet. Time to fight will come. But it is not now. <sighs> I guess you're right. Let's go. Um, Spyro. What? I don't like this. It feels like she's baiting us. I'm getting smarter. Spyro! Destroy the crystal! Quickly! Let's get him out of here before Cinder gets back. If only it were that easy, little one. So, so, so b -b big. Time you learned how complicated life can be. Run! Spyro! Save yourself! Not this time. This time I fight. <laughs> Great. Spyro. Um, Spyro. What? I don't like this. It feels like she's baiting us. I'm getting smarter. Spyro! Destroy the crystal! Quickly! Let's get him out of here before Cinder gets back. If only it were that easy, little one. So, so, so b -b big. Time you learned how complicated life can be. Run! Spyro! Save yourself! Not this time. This time I fight. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> it's so sad it must end this way. 
Now, where was I? Does she ever use doors? There was something in her eyes, Ignitus. Something familiar. There should be, Spyro. You and Cinder share more than you know. It's time I told you the truth. All of it. You see, after I took your egg to the Silver River, I returned to the grotto to find utter chaos. The other guardians had been overrun, and all the other eggs had been smashed by the Dark Master's forces. All except one. You see, the Dark Master was torn. He wanted to destroy all the eggs to prevent the birth of the Purple Dragon. But he also needed a dragon. Why would he need a dragon? Us, Spyro. Only one born in the year of the dragon could open the portal that served as the Dark Master's prison. Cinder? I'm afraid so. But if we come from the same place, why is she so... so... Evil? Monstrous? Big? Sexy? Oops, did I say that? Because, Spyro, after the night of the raid, she was corrupted by the Dark Master's poisonous powers. Twisted by his evil law, she's become the Dark Master's monster. But why? What does this Dark Master want? He wants to be freed from the portal of convexity, to wreak havoc across the realms. And if Cinder gets there, he just might succeed. I'm afraid. We might be too late. No, I refuse to give up. I'm going to stop Cinder and the Dark Master. <laughs> Wait, you uh, you heard the dragon, Spyro. He said, too late. We'll get him next time. Come on, champ. You did a great job, and let's let's take five. No, I'm ready now. Okay, okay, Spyro. You're right. At the very least, you have to try. If the Dark Master escapes. A shadow will fall over the land, and who knows what will happen then. May the ancestors look after you. May they look after us all. <laughs> it's so sad it must end this way. Now, where was I? Does she ever use doors? There was something in her eyes, Ignitus. Something familiar. There should be, Spyro. You and Cinder share more than you know. It's time I told you the truth. All of it. You see, after I took your egg to the Silver River, I returned to the grotto to find utter chaos. The other guardians had been overrun, and all the other eggs had been smashed by the Dark Master's forces. All except one. You see, the Dark Master was torn. He wanted to destroy all the eggs to prevent the birth of the Purple Dragon. But he also needed a dragon. Why would he need a dragon? Us, Spyro. Only one born in the year of the dragon could open the portal that served as the Dark Master's prison. Cinder? I'm afraid so. But if we come from the same place, why is she so... so... Evil? Monstrous? Big? Sexy? Oops, did I say that? Because, Spyro, after the night of the raid, she was corrupted by the Dark Master's poisonous powers, twisted by his evil law, she's become the Dark Master's monster. But why? 
What does this dark master want? He wants to be freed from the portal of convexity, to wreak havoc across the realms. And if Cinder gets there, he just might succeed. I'm afraid we might be too late. No, I refuse to give up. I'm going to stop Cinder and the Dark Master. <laughs> Wait, you uh, you heard the dragon, Spyro. He said, too late. We'll get him next time. Come on, champ. You did a great job, and let's let's take five. No, I'm ready now. Okay, okay, Spyro, you're right. At the very least, you have to try. If the Dark Master escapes, a shadow will fall over the land. And who knows what will happen then. May the ancestors look after you. May they look after us all. This is where it really ends. Bring it! No mercy this time. I can't watch this. My master returns. We're too late! <laughs> Persistent little fellow, aren't you? This is where it really ends. Bring it! No mercy this time. I can't watch this. Uh, 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 she is just like me. Dude, we gotta get out of here now. I, I can't leave her behind. I've got to save her. So what? Save the beast has been trying to kill us? Yeah, that wasn't her fault. She was being used by the Dark Master. My pillow. Feeling better, Spyro? Not really, Ignitus. That battle drained every last bit of my strength. I can hardly lift my head. Yes, it will take some time for your powers to return. But they will in time, young dragon. They will in time. Cinder, ever since I failed the night of the raid. I've dreamt of this day. It wasn't just you, Ignitus. We all failed. Be that as it may, we're together again now. Thanks to Spyro. Well done, young dragon. Thanks, Ignitus. But we still don't know what's happened to the Dark Master. No matter, Spyro. There will be time to talk of the Dark Master later. Now it's time to be grateful for your success. His success? Hey, what about me? Just because a bunch of weird stuff doesn't fly out of my mouth doesn't mean I didn't help you now. Yeah, you, you were a, a big help, Sparks. No doubt about it. But just for the record, a lot of weird stuff does come out of that little mouth of yours. And what the heck is that supposed to mean? You know, I don't need this. I could have stayed with the llama people, whatever, where I was appreciated, but no. No, I decided to help the poor, helpless dragons Rid the world of evil. What a mistake that was, because 
I get no thanks. No respect, no love, no credit. My goodness. And I thought Voltaire talked a lot. I left home too, you know. I'm a little guy, yeah, that's right. Maybe you haven't noticed. Things are a lot bigger to me than they are to you. And did I back away? Uh-uh. Nah, nah, nah. Why? Because I got moxie. I'm a tough cookie. I got class. <laughs> I got a <clears throat> little frog in my throat. As I was saying, on tall planes, they knew a good thing when they saw it. They recognized the value of a quality dragonfly like me. But here I get nothing. Not even a thanks. Hey, how you doing? Good, let me buy you a drink. I should go back to the swamp. Mom will make it all good. <laughs> Mommy always does. is just like me. Dude, we gotta get out of here now. I, I can't leave her behind. I've got to save her. S what? Save the beast that's been trying to kill us? Yeah, that wasn't her fault. She was being used by the Dark Master. can go. I'm right behind you, buddy. <laughs> Mommy, fluff my pillow. Feeling better, Spiral? Not really, Ignitus. That battle drained every last bit of my strength. I can hardly lift my head. Yes, it will take some time for your powers to return. But they will in time, young dragon. They will in time. Cinder, ever since I failed the night of the raid, I've dreamt of this day. It wasn't just you, Ignitus. We all failed. Be that as it may, we're together again now, thanks to Spyro. Well done, young dragon. Thanks, Ignitus. But we still don't know what's happened to the Dark Master. No matter, Spyro. There will be time to talk of the Dark Master later. Now it's time to be grateful for your success. His success? Hey, what about me? Just because a bunch of weird stuff doesn't fly out of my mouth doesn't mean I didn't help you now. Yeah, you, you were a, a big help, Sparks, no doubt about it. But just for the record, a lot of weird stuff does come out of that little mouth of yours. And what the heck is that supposed to mean? You know, I don't need this. I could have stayed with the llama people, whatever, where I was appreciated, but no. No, I decided to help the poor, helpless dragons rid the world of evil. What a mistake that was, because I get no thanks. No respect, no love, no credit. My goodness. And I thought Voltaire talked a lot. I left home too, you know. I'm a little guy, yeah, that's right. Maybe you haven't noticed. Things are a lot bigger to me than they are to you. And did I back away? Uh-uh. Nah, nah, nah. Why? Because I got moxie. I'm a tough cookie. I got class. <laughs> I got a, <clears throat> a little frog in my throat. As I was saying, on tall planes, they knew a good thing when they saw it. They recognized the value of a quality dragonfly like me. But here I get nothing. Not even a thanks. Hey, how you doing? Good, let me buy you a drink. I should go back to the swamp. Mom will make it all good. <laughs> Mommy always does. For many years, we fought all over the islands. 
brutal clashes with the armies of the Dark Master, who was intent on preventing the prophecies from coming true. The other three Guardians and I led our small but valiant forces into battle after battle against our ruthless mercenary foe. And when we were beginning to turn the tide, Cinder came. Cinder? Yes, Cinder. Cinder was, is, monstrous, horrific, ferocious, a black dragon that fills the skies with terror, an unstoppable force of nature. Uh, yeah, you had me at ferocious. Listen, sounds like that thing that was chasing us, Spyro. Yes, she still searches for me. And years ago, I watched as Cinder plucked the other Guardians from the fields of battle, like so many ripe grapes from a vine. Without them, our cause is lost. Only I, Ignitus, managed to escape. Not that it matters. Cinder now rules all, and I sit here wondering what might have been, what else I might have done. For many years, we fought all over the islands. Brutal clashes with the armies of the Dark Master, who was intent on preventing the prophecies from coming true. The other three Guardians and I led our small but valiant forces into battle after battle against our ruthless mercenary foe. And when we were beginning to turn the tide, Cinder came. Cinder? Yes, Cinder. Cinder was, is, monstrous, horrific, ferocious, a black dragon that fills the skies with terror, an unstoppable force of nature. Uh, yeah, you had me at ferocious. Listen, sounds like that thing that was chasing us, Spyro. Yes, she still searches for me. And years ago, I watched as Cinder plucked the other Guardians from the fields of battle, like so many ripe grapes from a vine. Without them, our cause is lost. Only I, Ignitus, managed to escape. Not that it matters. Cinder now rules all, and I sit here wondering what might have been, what else I might have done. In the year of the dragon, in a world beyond the realms, I, like all the others, awaited the birth of the dragon of whom the prophecies foretold. But the Dark Master heard the prophecies as well. I should have hidden the eggs long before, but I... I thought we were ready. I thought they were safe. Oh, how I was wrong. Save them! The Dark Armies have come! May the ancestors look after you. May they look after us all.
Eventually, the egg came to rest in a distant swamp, where a family of dragonflies gathered round, wondering what magnificent creature could possibly live inside. They didn't have to wonder for long. In the year of the dragon, in a world beyond the realms, I, like all the others, awaited the birth of the dragon of whom the prophecies foretold. But the Dark Master heard the prophecies as well. I should have hidden the eggs long before, but I... I thought we were ready. I thought they were safe. Oh, how I was wrong. Save them! The dark armies have come! May the ancestors look after you. May they look after us all. Eventually, the egg came to rest in a distant swamp, where a family of dragonflies gathered round, wondering what magnificent creature could possibly live inside. They didn't have to wonder for long. In the year of the dragon, in a world beyond the realms, I, like all the others, awaited the birth of the dragon of whom the prophecies foretold. But the Dark Master heard the prophecies as well. I should have hidden the eggs long before, but I... I thought we were ready. I thought they were safe. Oh, how I was wrong. The dark armies have come.
May the ancestors look after you. May they look after us all. Eventually, the egg came to rest in a distant swamp, where a family of dragonflies gathered round, wondering what magnificent creature could possibly live inside. They didn't have to wonder for long. See anything, Spyro? No. But I've got a bad feeling. Me too. I think what's really great about this game, and what I'm excited about in regards to this game, is that it's sort of telling the story of Spyro from the beginning. He's actually a, a small purple dragon that is raised by dragonflies. He doesn't realize he's a dragon. And within the story, as the story progresses, he learns of his true self, where he comes from. You know, that there are these elders, these kind of guardian giant dragons, and that he's one of, of this ilk. And throughout the game, he starts to learn more about what he's capable of as well. The significance of being a pur purple dragon is something special. The powers that come along with that. And what's really cool as a, as a player, I think, is that you get to learn these different attributes throughout and use them in different ways, um, such as breathing fire, which is kind of typical to dragons, or breathing ice or electricity. And these things just kind of come throughout the game. And it's a really, really interesting story-based game that I think is quite immersive, which is cool. If I could leave with one of Spyro's powers, what could it be? It's tough, they're all pretty good. Um, but the old standby, the, the ability to fly, you know, that's a big deal. Breathing fire, okay. That could be, I mean, I could really run into some trouble with that. You know, can you lessen the amount of fire that you're breathing? What if you only intend to like, I don't know, light a candle, for instance, but then you light up your couch. You know, that could be really problematic. Electricity could be good because you could probably turn, like infuse something with power, but then how do you know like how, how much power to infuse it with? Like how many amps it takes? I and mean, if you go overboard and then you burn out all of your electricity, that'd be bad. Ice could be good, but then I could see that being extremely dangerous as well. I mean, all of these things, I think you'd have to learn how to regulate because you could, you could freeze yourself, you could, I don't know, I think there's a lot of, I, I, flying's the safest. I'll go with flying. I mean, he's a character that sort of starts out entering into a world that he's unfamiliar with and taking aboard something that is kind of quite massive. It's, it's not dissimilar 
uh, from from a, a journey that I'd taken before as someone who is embarking on something that is sort of bigger than they could conceive of or bigger than them. I came in to do the session today and I was told that I didn't know who the rest of the cast were and I came in and I was told that Gary Oldman did the voice of Ignitus, um, which blows my mind. I mean, he's one of my favorite actors of all time. Um, a true, true chameleon, someone that you can't really peg, has done every kind of voice, character, imaginable. I mean that my time for heroics is past, but with your help, we might be able to beat Cinder. I can't, Ignitus. I just learned what I am. You can, Spyro. You can. You are a purple dragon, a very special creature. It's a pleasure to be associated with, with him because I'm such a huge fan. And David Spade as Sparks as well. Um, I've met David uh, a couple of times and he's a really sweet guy and really, really funny. And, and for this kind of character, it's so important to have someone that's sort of biting and, and sarcastic and funny. Um, Sparks is definitely all those things and David Spade's perfect for that. Spyro, can you hear me? Are you okay, buddy? Hey, listen, forget about those cracks I made about your fatness and your being purple and stupid and fat. I'm very much, as a gamer, I'm very much attracted to a game that includes a great story that I can sink my teeth into that will allow me to kind of continue to focus on the progress of the game and lead to other games. Um, you know, my favorite games are story-based games. Um, and if the story's good and the, the actual gameplay is fun, then... Yeah, that's that's all you need, really. I think what's really great about this game, and what I'm excited about in regards to this game, is that it's sort of telling the story of Spyro from the beginning. He's actually a, a small purple dragon that is raised by dragonflies. He doesn't realize he's a dragon. And within the story, as the story progresses, he learns of his true self, where he comes from. You know, that there are these elders, these kind of guardian giant dragons, and that he's one of, of this ilk. And throughout the game, he starts to learn more about what he's capable of as well. The significance of being a pur purple dragon is something special. The powers that come along with that. And what's really cool as a, as a player, I think, is that you get to learn these different attributes throughout and use them in different ways, um, such as breathing fire, which is kind of typical to dragons, or breathing ice or electricity. And these things just kind of come throughout the game. And it's a really, really interesting story-based game that I think is quite immersive, which is cool. If I could leave with one of Spyro's powers, what could it be? It's tough, they're all pretty good. Um, but the old standby, the, the ability to fly, you know, that's a big deal. Just breathing fire, okay, that could be, I mean, I could really run into some trouble with that. You know, can you lessen the amount of fire that you're breathing? What if you only intend to like, I don't know, light a candle for instance, but then you light up your couch? You know, that could be really problematic. Electricity could be good because you could probably turn, like infuse something with power, but then how do you know like how, how much power to infuse it with? Like how many amps it takes? I and mean, if you go overboard and then you burn out all of your electricity, that'd be bad. Ice could be good, but then I could see that being extremely dangerous as well. I mean, all of these things I think you'd have to learn how to regulate because you could, you could freeze yourself, you could, I don't know. I think there's a lot of, I, I, flying's the safest. I'll go with flying. I mean, he's a character that sort of starts out entering into a world that he's unfamiliar with and taking aboard something that is kind of quite massive. It's, it's not dissimilar uh, from, from a, a journey that I'd taken before as someone who is embarking on something that is sort of bigger than they could conceive of or bigger than them. I came in to do the session today and I was told that I didn't know who the rest of the cast were. And I came in and I was told that Gary Oldman did the voice of Ignitus. Um, which blows my mind. I mean, he's one of my favorite actors of all time. Um, a true, true chameleon, someone that you can't really peg, has done every kind of voice, character, imaginable. I mean that my time for heroics is past, but with your help, we might be able to beat Cinder. I, I can't, Ignitus. I just learned what I am. You can, Spyro. 
You can. You are a purple dragon, a very special creature. It's a pleasure to be associated with, with him because I'm such a huge fan. And David Spade as Sparks as well. Um, I've met David uh, a couple of times and he's a really sweet guy and really, really funny. And, and for this kind of character, it's so important to have someone that's sort of biting and, and sarcastic and funny. Um, Sparks is definitely all those things and David Spade's perfect for that. Spyro, can you hear me? Are you okay, buddy? Hey, listen, forget about those cracks I made about your fatness and your being purple and stupid and fat. I'm very much, as a gamer, I'm very much attracted to a game that includes a great story that I can sink my teeth into that will allow me to kind of continue to focus on the progress of the game and lead to other games. Um, you know, my favorite games are story-based games. Um, and if the story's good and the, the actual gameplay is fun, then yeah, that's, that's all you need, really.